it's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners, EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930, toll free at 1-800-616-9236, and cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullias. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. So if you are sitting there struggling with your tax information, or if you have filed and they haven't sent you your money back, you're getting love letters, or uh, if you just have a, a sitting uh, across the table discussing, I wonder if this, this is deductible. This is your time to call in, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 in a cell phone. I got Tiffany Fabian with me. Hey, hey there, Esther. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yesterday Thank was you. your birthday. Yeah, somebody told me it's right between St. Patty's and St. Joseph. Right. So I should be well Saint covered Tiffany. with the saints. St. Tiffany. Right. <clears throat> right. Um, uh, we we uh, last week started talking about itemized deductions and we got up to charity so we wanted to talk about charitable deductions and the rest of the itemized deductions uh, so if you're somebody that uh, is wondering what actually is deduct deductible this always was called the long form but the truth is that's really not what a long form is a long form means that you can't file in a 1040a right. or a 1040ez and you don't necessarily have to itemize to file on a 1040 form because there's certain restrictions but if you're somebody that thinks uh you you wonder if you would be able to itemize you got to make sure you know all the things that are out there right that's right that's right uh, and and so we're going to talk about charity and first of all wanted to talk about that they made the the change permanent for people that are on an rmd who want to give money to charity they can give up to a hundred thousand dollars on a direct rollover from their ira to their charity right but then you can't deduct it but it isn't deductible right. but then by the same token it's not income that's right, right? which is and a which good is deal. really important because if you're somebody like let's say for instance you're you're a senior and you aren't paying uh, taxes on your social security but if you want to take and give money to your charity and you took 20,000 out of your IRA that would be income and that would make your social security more taxable so this direct rollover means that you can fund your favorite charity mm -hmm. And have it and fulfill your RMD right. and have it not be taxable and make your other income taxable. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is, many people don't know about what some of the things that you can do on charities. You can deduct churches, synagogues, te temples, mosques, and other religious organizations. Uh, federal, state, and local governments, if a co contribution is made for public use. Uh, nonprofit schools, hospitals, volunteer fire companies, and if you're a volunteer firefighter, not only is the uh, is that deductible, but you also get the cost of your uh, the mileage, mileage that you would do. And the, on New York State, there's a firefighter's credit up yep. to $200 yep. refundable. Well, I know another good thing that people always ask me. It's it's political season right now, and there's all the candidates. And if you volunteer, if you uh, give money to a political fund, you cannot that's, take that. That's exactly and right. So, so that's something important to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, also, public charities such as Salvation Army, Red Cross, Care, Goodwill, uh, usually people give cash or items in kind. Right. Now, that's where it's important. If you're giving non-cash contributions, you have to get the little ticket and provide, in the event of an audit, a complete backup of how you determine everything and you can go to salvationarmy.org uh, online and there's a complete list of what the fair market value of those items might be correct and right? if you, there's a place that says if they're fair this is the value if they're an excellent so it's a really helpful chart uh, the other thing is charitable travel is worth 14 cents a mile whether you're a firefighter maybe you're doing meals on wheels maybe you volunteer at the church and you go on visitation all of those miles are docent downtown at mm -hmm. the so. Frechets. I mean, that's all 14 cents a mile travel, so you got to make sure you keep track of your mileage. Yep, absolutely. And, and those miles really build up. They really do. So just keep a mile log and be diligent when you're driving to the charity. Another thing people aren't aware of is if you're a church delegate. Let's say that uh, there's a convention down in Baton Rouge, and they say, Sister Esther, would you go down to Baton Rouge? Well, then the trip would be deductible if you're a delegate for your for your church. 
that makes sense right yep yep um other other things that uh that people like to give is like their cars yep and another thing while we're on miles is don't forget if you're a soccer coach or your assistant soccer coach those miles you can also deduct i know that um, in our own personal household we've been soccer coaches assistant soccer coaches so those miles really add up too that's right yeah I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And if you're calling from Florida or, Ca or Canada or Arizona, our to toll free number is 1 800 616 9236. 1 800 616 9236. Nine, and if you're listening on WGUF in Naples, Florida, we welcome you as well. No, don't forget our office on Airport Pulling Road. We're there 9 to, to 7, Monday through Friday. The rest of our offices in Western New York are open 9 to 9. I talked to Paul in Florida the other day, and he said to me, yeah, it's just a little too hot for March. I said, I don't <laughs> want to hear it, Paul. Okay, why don't we go to the phones, and we will talk to Eric. Hey, Eric, how can we help you? Yes, Esther. Um as uh, most everybody knows, uh, Ted Cruz is uh, running for president, and one of the one of his uh, first things he ever says when he's doing his stump speeches is, is how he's going to revamp the IRS and possibly even eliminate it to, to a certain extent. Do you know offhand if that's going to affect uh, the mandatory penalties that Obama has for Obamacare? Okay. Well, first of all, um, what. What I know is I don't know what they're going to do to collect money, okay? So that's interesting, and nobody knows what they're going to do because the first thing he actually says, he's going to, he's going to uh, s repeal all the things that Obama did. Then he says he's going to repeal uh, uh, the um, Affordable Care Act, and then he says he's going to make get rid of the IRS. So I don't know what he's going to do, and I don't have a crystal ball, but I will tell you if they come up with another system that works better than what they got and it's better for the United States, I'm all in favor of it. But but I can tell you if he is going to repeal all the things that Obamacare did, that would be the premium tax and the Affordable Care Act. So if that's the case, then there would be no penalty. That's true. You that's know? true. Yeah. That's what I thought was good. It was it pretty much but I mean, hand it's, in it's, hand, I would, I would it, assume. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's, I do, I, it's very, very, I mean, let's face it. What has gone on in the last four years while they've been rolling out this uh, Affordable Care Act, which is not affordable or much care, I might say, is is going to be like unstringing spaghetti. So who knows what's going to happen with that. But what Tiffany says is absolutely right. If they repeal it, then they'd repeal all the penalties. Yeah. Yes, and uh, it, it's just a matter of how much of the IRS will be left. He says he wants to replace it with a f flat tax. and. That, that has a lot of different meanings, I'm sure. but It does. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's so, I mean, our tax law is so complicated. It really has very little to do with taxes, and it has a lot to do with social programs yeah. and that, pushing and pulling people. Like, for instance, if you go to college, you get a certain mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. If you're a single person with, with no children, you don't do as well. If you're a parent with children and you're low income, you get some money. So it'll be interesting to see how they play this whole thing out. Yeah, because what er Eric, what Esther said is so true this conversation goes on with my clients and and the truth is in our tax code there's so many social programs and there's so many prodding and pushing and moving <clears throat> so it's going to be interesting to see right, how they conquer that I, I mean to me the, fair, the fairest thing would be a sales tax but that's my uh, no, I that's, mean the, the current penalty for not uh, having Obamacare is what again is it two percent this year two percent this year but there's a lot of exceptions did you not have uh, health insurance last year that's correct. Okay, so may I ask what your approximate income is? Uh, Seventeen thousand. Okay, so it very well. It sounds to me like you get an exception to penalty. Code A. So okay. you um, you now. because because one of the exceptions to penalty is that your in it would be uh, it would be detrimental to your financial situation to have it, or your your considered low income. So, uh, or, uh, or if your employer, if you have an employer plan, uh, you're paying more than 9.05% of your wages in your health insurance. So there's a lot of exceptions to penalty. And what I'd suggest you do is uh, call our office and we'll help you to work through some of those exceptions, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Bye-bye. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Our, we'd love to hear what you have to say. 8030930. 8030930. Star 930 on a cell phone. We're going to take a short break and we'll be with you on the other side.
Tyler. Tyler's in there dancing. We got another month to go. We do. All right. I'm Esther Galeus, the tax lady, and Tiffany's right. We got one month till uh, April the 18th. By the way, April the 18th is a deadline this year because uh, the 15th falls on, on a Friday, which is some kind of a holiday. They can't do it on Saturday and Sunday because that's a weekend. So it extends it to Monday. So it gives you three extra days to procrastinate, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> but yep. I think you should do it now, and I'll tell you why. You, if you're somebody that owes money, you want to take the time to make sure that you have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and you've taken everything that you possibly can. And if you do all money, one of the best ways, if you have any wages or self-employment, is to use the IRA as a tool. Or I had a, a person today who does construction and does it really well, and I told him about the SEP. And so he's going to put money into an SEP, right. and he's so up any, to 25%. Any kind of pension, any yeah. kind of pension plan. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phones, and we'll talk to Jim in Tonawanda. Hey, Jim. Hey, thank you. Um, a question about uh, deductions for a widower. I read somewhere where you can continue to claim her as a dependent if uh, I'm a widower. For a year or two after. Now, who's her? His wife. As your my, wife? My, my deceased wife. All right. So in the year of, the, of, de- of, of death, all right, you can file a joint return just like you did the years before. If your spouse passed away, let's say, the first day of January of the next year, even though they were only alive for one day the next year, you'd still be able to file a joint return with them. Okay. I- but if if your spouse had passed away, um, it, let's say in November or December in 2015, you'll file a joint return for 2015. In 2016, the only way you can be qualifying widow with is to have a dependent child. So two years after the death of your spouse, if you have children that are still dependent upon you, in the year of death you file jointly, then the next year qualifying widower, then the next year, again, as long as children in the house, qualifying widower, then the next year, if you still have children in your house, you would revert to head of the household. Okay, and, and there was that was, uh, as I understood it, you could claim her as a dependent, and then somewhere else... Oh, further, no, no, uh, no, no, you filed jointly just as mm-hmm. always, just to. a joint return. And nothing is allowed after that period, two years or something like that. Uh, oh, uh, but you, did you, but you, you see, in the year of death, you file jointly. Yeah. The next year, do you have children in your home? No. Then you go single right right away the next year. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So a, a nice consideration is Jim might want to begin to itemize because the standard deduction is going to... That's, and that's the other thing. Yeah. In the year that you become single, really? your, your standard deduction drops from 12 6 down to to 6300 so it means it's easier to itemize because there's not so much yeah. uh, you don't have to come up to that high bar so maybe you might want to buy a sale a car and think about the sales, sales taxes tax. are deductible. you know you really right. want to focus on that and pay attention to things that you might not otherwise have paid attention that's to. exactly right um, talking again about uh, charity charities you are allowed to expense up to 50 percent of your uh, income for cash contributions, and if they're, if it goes over that, then they carry forward. Right. So that's another thing. And some of the things that aren't deductible, people are, are always asking about, is the value of your time, the value of your blood. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like you said, political contributions, those are not deductible. Right, right. Okay? All right, let's go back to the phones, and we'll talk to Ann. Hey, Ann, how, how can we help you? Oh, hi, Esther. I love your show. Thank you very much. I mailed in my 1040 this past week. Okay. And the day after I mailed it, I noticed I forgot to check the box for line 61. I did have health insurance all year. Mm-hmm. What should I do now? Mm-hmm. Well, you just kind of wait for them to uh, contact you. Yes. Because if there's any question, they'll, they'll con- contact you, which is something I wanted to talk about today. It, basically, people are getting 1095 A, Bs, and Cs. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you got a 1095A, that meant that you got your health insurance through the marketplace, and those refunds, in many cases, would be held up. Did you get your refund, uh, your your health insurance through the marketplace, or th- from your employer? Uh, I got it through the marketplace. Okay, so it would be a 1095A, mm-hmm. and they probably are going to hold it up anyway. Quite frankly, they're going to just hold up your refund, Did, and they're going to ask. Oh, I don't for have proof. a refund. Oh, well, then they're not going to hold it up at all. Did you do the 1065 that goes with the um, marketplace uh, allocation? 
I was wondering, Anne? A 1065. Oh, what, oh, I'm sorry. The one when you get it through the marketplace. What is the form? The 8965. 8965. Yeah, 89 and 10 are really close. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Did you the do, 8965. Did you do the 8965? No. Yeah. Did no. you get any kind of subsidy? No. You got no subsidy. Then that wouldn't make any difference. Right. Okay. So, so the fact that I didn't fill so, in that so, box so for you, So you paid your liability, sent it in, mm -hmm. and you didn't check the box. So what's going to happen is they're going to take your money, cash your check, and probably during the summer you're going to get a letter that's that verifies that you had insurance. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. If you need tax help, we are here to help you 9 to 9, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. Uh, during the week, if you have any tax questions, you can e email us your tax questions through our website at egtax.com. And uh, we certainly would love to help you getting back to itemized deductions. If you're somebody that does itemize or should itemize other things that people um, may not be aware of as miscellaneous itemized deductions. Right, right. Yeah, and, and, I, and I know I want to go there, but really quickly, just thinking of Ann, uh, medical, it's, because she paid that health insurance, medical is an itemized deduction. Exactly I know right. you and Chris talked about that last week, but it's I'm just thinking she probably paid yeah, all that. Which is true. So if Ann is single, and I don't know why I got the impression she was single, but let's say right. she was paying $400 a month. Yeah. That's $4,800 that could have gone as a as an itemized deduction. But, of course, it has to be reduced by 10% right. of your AGI, so that it has a lot to do with or how difficult point. it is to do your your medical it's just something that's easy to be forgotten so easy to forget yeah. all right let's go to gene gene from north carolina hey gene how can we help you hey thanks for taking my call good uh i last year i contributed money to a college scholarship fund mm -hmm. for a nonprofit college mm -hmm. is that deductible under schedule a charities if if it went to the general if in other words if it didn't if it wasn't specifically earmarked and it went to the general fund, it is deductible if it's for a non-for-profit, yes. What if it went to a, to the scholarship fund, but not the college, it, not generally to the college, but particular scholarship fund established by the college? I, I th I'm, I'm sure that's deductible, yes. Okay, well, I'll check with them, but I, I know, I know yeah, you only can no, answer that in should, general. In other words, um, if, as long as it can be, help, it can be spent on qualified not-for-profit, items then it'll be deductible i see okay, okay thanks a lot thank you gene yeah. bye-bye what a nice gift that's a great thing to pay attention to you know yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, of people that, esta that establish foundations yeah. for for continuing education uh okay let's talk about miscellaneous itemized deductions 8030930 8030930 star 930 on a cell phone love to hear what you have to say all right miscellaneous itemized deductions kind of in a broad category would be things that you spend money on to make money, mm -hmm. okay? So whether you have a financial advisor, right? Right. Tax accountant, attorney who may be negotiating your contract so you can keep your job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, I had somebody yesterday who worked for an employer, and the employer borrowed money from this employee, and uh, they're having trouble getting it back, and they're using an attorney to get back the funds, something like that might right. be in that arena. So uh, the other thing is, um, or, or negotiating your contract. Right. Um, the other thing is if you're somebody, maybe you're working two jobs, and you go from job A to job B, the driving between those two locations, is deductible at 57 and a half cents a mile split shifts right uh, if you have an office in your home mm -hmm. you're it's there for the convenience of your employer then and you get a percentage of all the expenses of operating your home and I can't tell you how many employees now are working from home there's more and more and more and so it's something that you really want to pay attention to that's and so and your desk that you put in yeah. your office and your chair and yeah. your file cabinet all that uh, all that that's deductible so, uh, if you pay looking for jobs job hunting that's exactly right uh, travel to look for jobs airfare hotel meals yep. as long as it's ordinary and necessary that's right okay so if you you happen to be wanting to go to Hawaii <laughs> to look for a job <laughs> in January in a snowstorm you know th that again it has to be ordinary and necessary a another thing is uh, temporary assignments so if you are an employee who is on temporary assignment which is less than a year that's something that would go under this miscellaneous expenses and that would be your mileage uh, your cost of hotel your, your temporary items that are needed for this temporary assignment so that's something to pay attention to that's 
That's exactly right. All right, here's a here's the kind of appraisal fees for uh, charitable do donations, um, clerical and uh, office help for maintaining your investments. Um, Credit card convenience fee for paying income tax by credit card is mm -hmm. deductible. So at tax time, uh, you owe $4,000 and the credit card uh -huh. charge you a convenience fee. That's uh, miscellaneous itemized deductions. Uh, fees to collect dif uh, dividends and interest. Uh, hobby expenses up to the amount of income right. are uh, miscellaneous itemized deductions. Um, Same with Liquidated da damages paid to a former employer for a breach of employment contract. Uh, uh, medical examinations required by an employer. These are all miscellaneous itemized deductions. Yep. So union dues. Yep. Right? I was thinking if you have a rental and it's a non-for-profit rental, you'd put the rental income on line 21 and then up to that amount would go on the miscellaneous for your expenses for your rental. Right. So. And then you, and your uniforms, if you um, if you have a uni qualified uniform, in other words, when you walk in the room, they go, oh, that's a doctor. Right. Oh, that's an airplane pilot. Oh, that's a nurse. That would be deductible. But if you just have nice clothes, that's not deductible. Right. right? All right, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, trying to help you with some of your itemized deductions. We're going to take a break for the news. We'll be on the other side with your phone calls. That is the Gin Blossoms. I should have known. How could I not know it was the Gin Blossoms? That's your new favorite old band. They're not an old band. Early 90s. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right, Master Golius, the tax lady. We want to help you with taxes. From EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 on your cell phone. I was talking to Tiff about the miscellaneous items, my seduction thing. Like if you're an over-the-road trucker, Mm -hmm. when you uh, when you spend the night outside of your general tax home you know because you traveled more than 50 cents more than 50 miles then you get to to take your over the road trucking expenses and because your DOT 80% of those expenses right. for your food is uh, deductible, deductible as opposed to 50% and those are really big deductions cuz some of these guys are gone and they're 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 gone for 200 days in a year and their deductions are like $18,000 so right. to not have to not lose 50% uh, and and use the eighty percent for DOT is a big thing. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, let's see. We got. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, and by the way, our stream our streamer guy on our message board said, "Hi, EG Tax. New York residents send their federal returns to Andover, which is the and the eighteenth is a holiday in Massachusetts, so isn't it the nineteenth? Now we got it on good authority for e filing. Okay." Now, for mailing in returns, we're not supposed to mail in returns. You're supposed to send them electronically. Uh, for e-filing, it is the 18th. Right, so, because our center, Chris said, is Washington. Right, so, for e-filing. Right. So that does, uh, the 19th is not the So the, the official the date is the 18th. All right, right, let's go back to the phones, and we're going to talk to, I don't know who, but this is a surprise person. Hi, this is Esther. How can I help you? Hi, Esther. This is Dave. I've called you before. I plan on retiring this year. Yeah. Actually, May 1st. I've done what I said I was going to do. I've tried to collect no pay. I I maxed out my 401 and my, and my catch-up. Okay. So yeah, I'm also going to end up with vacation time that's going to actually be probably paid to me next year. Okay. Is there any possible way I can put that in the 401k next year? You know, it's because it's, it's earned. It'll probably be... Like earned credited income this year, I'm going to say. I it, I can't see why not. You'd have to go talk to HR and see if there's any restrictions in your company. But if it's as long as it's earned income from your employer, it ought to be uh, eligible to be also deferred. Okay, because I was deferring all my vacation until like next year, because with the buyout plan and everything that I'm going to make this year, I'm just going to put me in a high tax bracket, anyways. Okay, but I thought you said you got rid of everything. No, I didn't get rid of it. No, I mean, you I, put it no, all I, away. You put it all in your 401k. I did. I, did. I, right. I maxed out on everything, but I'm still working till May. Oh, but okay. I, so there's but no But I more have room. vacation. I did. I'm going to be. Right. I'm going to be able to. I'm going to have vacation time 
and they pay it. They well, won't pay it till double next check, February. Double check with your your HR department and make sure it's okay. But as far as I could see, it's earned income and it should be eligible for uh, shelter. Okay, and my uh, the guy that my financial planner told me another. He said he's recommending that I purchase some land, which I've already owned for 25 years, like 50 acres. He he asked me. He said, "Why don't you start a tree farm?" And then I'll be able to get write offs. Does that sound like it's a good deal? Uh, on your land? Yeah. Okay. So And then I could I could write off you, any gas, okay. anything that I do with it. Okay. So everything has to be ordinary and necessary. Okay? So you have to truly want to be a farmer. That has to be your goal. Your goal right. has to be making money. Your goal can't to be to have a tax write off. Okay, because the IRS allows you to take expenses because you're trying to make money. Because if you make money, then they make money. Okay, this is kind of a partnership. Mm -hmm. So if you do a tree farm and your and your goal is to just shelter the, uh, income as opposed to making money, if you get audited, you will lose, and that's not a happy uh, event. So okay. you want to make sure if you're going to do a tree farm, do a tree farm. My husband and I used to have a tree farm, Christmas a and Christmas so tree farm, and we truly um, actively we, we, trying we, to make money. The house we bought had a, a, like thousands of trees in the backyard. And we started having people come out and chop them down, and we tried to make money. And as a matter of fact, we did make money. It was a lot of fun. And but but you got to have that motivation. And so to answer your question, if that's your rationale, then it might be a good move, Dave. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. So bye bye. And he's retiring. Yeah. And he's retiring. Yeah. Right. But again, it has to be your motivation. Right. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady. Eight oh three oh nine three oh. 8030930 star 930 on a cell phone. We used to have a lot of fun at the Christmas tree farm. Oh, we that used to. Was and so, so we only had like Charlie Brown trees yeah, left. Yeah, and then remember And then 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 what I did was the last year we did it because the trees were And there horrible. was a St. Bernard and he would guide you with by your arm. By your arm, yeah. Through the but we we went out and we had people in the backyard chopping trees and we went and <laughs> we went to another tree farm oh, and, no. and got our own tree. And we came home and those people said the people they they to drag up their trout Charlie Brown tree. They said, "Did you just go buy your tree?" And we <laughs> said, "Yeah, those are so bad." Anyway, uh, let's go back it to the phone. We talked to Debbie. To grow those Christmas it's not trees. Not that long. Hey, no. Debbie, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. I want to ask this ask question. Yeah. I did my tax return on uh, February sixth, but I still haven't received the return. And when I call, there's nobody to talk to. It's just to record him, and they say they have it. But it's not done. All right. Did you, you look? Have any did, idea how did long you, they, hang they on, take Deb, for a return? Did you send it electronically? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you look online and the IRS says they're processing it? That's just what they say. Okay. Did you have health care that you bought through the marketplace? No. No. Hmm. And it was February when? It was through, through uh, my husband's February, February, February 6th. Uh, yeah, that would be very long. Okay. So I know. You, if you, when you call the IRS, don't choose the option that says I'm calling about my refund. Choose the option that says I'm I have a tax question. Okay. And then it takes a while, you know, take a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and uh, some no dos and you just kind of wait. Somebody will finally come on the phone unless it's really, really busy. Don't call on a Monday. It's a bad day. Um, okay. And then you say, where's my where's my tax return and then debbie if that doesn't work call our office and there's a line for practitioner and we can always try to help you too right so if you can't get through call our office and one of us can do a conference call with you okay okay all right one last question i thought it's a, the day that i did it i heard on the radio there was something going on with the the um the taxes some kind of glitch oh well actually there was kind of a crash at the irs maybe but they didn't get it but they there but when you check the website it says it's processing right yes then, yes. then they did get it okay i will okay. do exactly what you said all right thank, thank you, you so dear much. Thank bye bye Steph. i'm esther golius the tax lady from eg tax 8030930 Eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on the cell phone. We're talking about some of the things you might miss if you are looking for itemized deductions. And one of the biggest ones is you you don't think much about it, but miscellaneous itemized deductions. Now those miscellaneous deductions are subject to a two percent limitation. So if you made a hundred thousand dollars, they take 
$2,000 off of the total miscellaneous itemized right. deduction. There's another uh, miscellaneous itemized deduction, which is not subject to, to, to 2%, and that's where you, if you had gambling income, mm -hmm. that's where you would take your gambling losses. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Yep, I was doing that the other day, and... You know, you usually get a win-loss statement. You were gambling statement. or you were taking the losses? I was uh, <laughs> not gambling because I was doing tax returns. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the phones. We'll talk to Catherine. Hey, Catherine, how can we help you? Hi, ladies. Um, I have a home in Buffalo, a double. Okay. And I, last summer I bought a uh, summer home in Wyoming County. And I'm wondering... I plan to retire there in four years uh, when I'm old enough to collect. And I wondered, can I deduct what I'm putting into it to rehab it? Into your, into your, home. Into your summer home. Right. Okay. I'm, I have to rehab the whole thing. Okay, and so, uh, I thought, I know right. with my double I can take off what I'm doing, but okay. is there a percentage of time over the summer months that you need to rent it out in order to be eligible to All deduct right. anything? All right. So here's the thing. If it's personal and you just have it just because Catherine really likes it and is going to retire there, then it, then the improvements are going to add to the cost basis, okay, but mm -hmm. are not going to be deductible. If, however, Catherine turns it into a rental and mm -hmm. Catherine has a profit motive, right? okay, then Catherine can depreciate it, put it in and depreciate it, um, but that's that's the criteria. It has to be for oh. profitability, and that right. has to be your motivation. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying that uh, you are looking down the line to move into it, mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. the meantime, you're going to rent it out. And so you, you can take it and move it from a personal asset, I mean, from a business asset back to a personal asset, okay, when uh, you move in. But that might right. be a good way to mitigate the the expenses and you can take the uh, deductions on everything uh, as you're rehabbing it and then later on move into it. Yeah, and, and then to point out, Catherine and Estro can correct me if I'm wrong, but while she's rehabbing it, she can't take all of the expenses until it's ready for, for, for rental. For rental, right. until you have so, it ready. Oh, so, I see. Okay, so, like, so once I say, do begin renting it out, I can take off whatever it. I'm put into it from that point on. Right, and again, but it has to be, it, it, so it, again, it, the whole thing has to come up to the, uh, the bar is this, in and in, in, is this for income producing? Yeah. So if you are going to rent it out okay. three days a, a summer or two mm -hmm. weeks a summer, and you're using it the rest of the time personally, it retains being a personal asset. If you use it for more than fourteen days a year or ten percent of the time it's rented, th then that would be a, that would be a personal asset. And then Catherine, I want to say something too. I, mm -hmm. I think you might have misunderstood me. When, when all those expenses to make it to where you want to get to go to mm -hmm. are something that you're going to be able to depreciate when it's ready for rental. So it's not lost. You're going to keep building it and keep building it and keep building it. And all those costs, when you're ready to have it rented, then you're going to start to be able to use them. You know, Provided you it's right. for Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks for I calling, appreciate Catherine. you saying I, I just, uh, I'm in the middle of it now and thought, well, it would be a good idea to, since I have... Um, a friend nearby that bought one. Um, of course, she doesn't need to rehab hers. <laughs> but I thought um, I could just turn this into a business for four years. Then that and that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, and then just uh, stay with her. There you go. And, you know, to keep an eye on it and take that care of it. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you so right. much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Bye-bye. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side, 8030930, star 930 in the cell phone. See you on the other side. All right. Everything's relative, Esther. I like this stuff. Anyway, I'm Esther Gulli. Start me the up. Tax lady. Start, this me is, up. This is start me up. Beast of Burden. Oh, Beast shoot. of Burden. Well, boy, Tiff, I don't know. 
I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from AG Tax. If you need tax help, we want to help you. Uh, we'd ha also like to help you here in the studio, 8030930, 8030930. Uh, wanted to talk quickly about anybody with Obamacare who has the form 1095A, you probably are going to find your refunds held up. And the sad thing is those are usually the people that need it the worst. So it's very sad, and if you need help, uh, EG Tax will help you. Um, uh, yesterday, we had a lady that was just like on meltdown, and, uh, and Maria was able to get her a taxpayer advocate to help her because she needed her money to close on her house. Mm -hmm. Very, very sad. Let me yeah. go back to the phones and talk to Chris. Hi, Chris. How can we help you? Hello, Chris. Hi. Calling about um, your miscellaneous deduction topic. Yeah. Uh, I have a 401k plan that I have a financial advisor who supervises it. And every uh, distribution that I get on a monthly basis from that account, uh, I get a, um, a summary uh, W-2 at the end of the year for all that's been withdrawn. However, the, the quarterly fee that they charge me for that account, um, it, it, it gets withdrawn, uh, but... Uh, I don't get any 1099 or W-2 for those amounts that are, I guess you would call it a management fee. Okay, but you um, see, the thing is, Chris, on this? Chris, in order to take the management fees, uh, your brokerage fees, it has to be an outside of pension income, okay? It's because After you're tax. only going to be taxed on the money you withdraw from your 401k because it was all put in there pre-tax. When you take it out, it's after. You're going to take it out, and, and it'll be taxable, okay? So what you're going to be taxed on is the net dollars. The net dollars would be after the brokerage fees are taken out. So you can't take it before and take it later. So the answer is no, not what you see on those But it statements. would be if it were outside of your 401k. Does that help, Hello? Chris? So so no. Being inside of the 401k, so let me let me just let, let's let look at on what I pay the accountant. Yeah. So look, it, let's very simply. Let's say we put in a thousand dollars into our 401k, and the broker takes a hundred dollars. So what's left? Nine hundred dollars, right? Yes. And and if I draw out the nine hundred dollars, only nine hundred dollars is taxable, right? Because well, it, it because the taxable, because yes, no Chris because the the broker's fees are out of it so I'm only going to be taxed on what I take out after brokerage fees so you can't take it you can't take it as a deduction because the money's already gone and this all that money in there is being tax deferred. I understand that, but why isn't the money that I'm paying to the broker? For managing the account also considered as income to me and therefore I would have to pay state and federal tax on it okay so are you writing your broker a check every month every no nope. no nope. he's nope. taking it out of the money right that's, that's in correct. there taxed uh, that has never been taxed right that's correct so you put in a thousand dollars he t let's say the brokerage fee is a hundred what's left is nine hundred that's after the brokerage fees and you say, I want to take all my money that's in that account out. When you take it out, it's taxable. That's all the money that's left in there is $900. If you take it out, that's what's taxable because the $100 that he took out for management is already gone, and you're only taxed on net dollars. Okay. But that $100 no, that I spend Chris, Chris you, you can't take it. It's already been taken. Anyway, you know, you, you, what you, we can do is we can t chat um, on, on email. My, e my email address is egtax at Hotmail, and I'll direct. Uh, maybe I can. I understand that you don't understand what I'm saying, but it's, Trust her. It, it's after tax dollars. So that's why. And it's already gone. So thank you for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. I, 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 I feel bad. I wish it's hard I, to I wrap thought, your mind I thought I it. couldn't. I thought I made it clear, uh, yeah, but maybe I didn't. Uh, you, you once taught me the fresh money and the non-fresh money. No, but the whole thing is every dollar in there was already ta was taken out. It was a, a subtraction. It was money right. that you never, and it's growing tax deferred. Right. So all that money in there has never been taxed. Right. So when you take it out, that's what's taxable. If they took out brokerage fees, you're only being taxed on the net dollars anyway. 
I don't know. Well, let's go to the phone mm-hmm. and talk to poor Dennis. Hey, Dennis, how can we help you? Hey, I got a re- um, I got a letter from the IRS uh, yesterday, the day before, about uh, back taxes. I didn't claim some uh, social security. Social security. My wife's. Mm-hmm. I filed jointly, and she's on social security disability. Mm-hmm. And um, they said I didn't claim forty five hundred dollars, which I probably didn't because I don't ever remember seeing a, a statement a form come from the from Social Security. Little and they say I owe seven hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, we filed joint. Mm-hmm. With, could we file separate? Would I be better you, off? And once you're married filing joint, you cannot amend to be married filing separate. If it's with, uh, if it's after the close of the tax year. So, no, you can't. And it probably wouldn't be a better answer if you did. And anyway, separate. if you did file separately, they would still make uh, her pay an 85. But you can't. Unless you, you can't. didn't live together. Once you file married joint and, and you didn't amend back to married separate within the tax year before April the 15th, then you can no longer go back to file married separate. So I'm just stuck paying the separate. You, you are. Make sure you didn't put it on there, though. Yeah, I, you know, I, I looked at the form. Yeah. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't on there, but I'm not even sure that that's the amount that she was only getting in the 300s, and they said it was 4,500, which would mean it should shouldn't have been more than. I guess it was. Uh, but if you go to the Social Security website, you can go back and look at what your records were in previous years. Oh, and I could to, go on hers and, and, and get that and, right off. Right, there. and take a look at whether how much she got in that year. Or call Social Security. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dennis. Right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay, and I know it can be frustrating. Let's see. We're going to go to Andrew. Hey, Andrew, how can we help you? Hi. Um, I just purchased a duplex owner-occupied this tax year. Yep. I had a two-part question. Okay. The first part is I know I can write off things, like when I fix the rent inside, I can write those expenses off. I guess my first part is, is there anything else I can write off? Oh, sure. And well, look at Here's the rule of thumb. If it has anything to do with maintaining or improving within reason your rental, your property in general, it's going to be either uh, 100% deductible if it's on the tenant side or percentage-wise deductible uh, if it's to the house in general. So if you put siding on the house in general and it's a 50-50 rental, then you're going to be able to write off and depreciate the siding. If, if you came in and you put, you fixed the electric in your tenant's portion, it's 100% deductible, okay? If you put, if you upgrade the electrical on the tenant's side, it's 100% deductible, but it's subject to depreciation. If you cut the grass, the grass cutting is, again, on a 50-50 situation because you live in half, half deductible. The cost of the lawnmower, the cost of the gasoline. Homeowner's insurance, right. PMI. Uh, right. Uh, mortgage interest paid, property taxes paid is water half. bill, user fees, um, trash removal, uh, mileage to go to the store to Home to, Depot depreci- at fifty-seven and a half cents a mile to take house. care of your property, depreciating the whole house. If if you it. let them use your backyard and you put in a patio set, half of that's going to be deductible. So depending upon what you do, it's either going to be depreciable or deductible or 100% deductible or partially deductible, depending upon what percentage of the house is rented out. Okay, so... Well, you know what we have, though, Andy? At our office, you can stop in on Niagara Falls Boulevard. We have these rental books, and they have a little house on it, and they have all the things you can write off, and you can keep track of it every month. So just uh, go down your North Tonawanda. We're right on Niagara Falls Boulevard, 2475. Just go in and tell them Esther said you could pick up a rental book. All right. One okay. last thing. Uh, yep. Closing costs. Can I write off closing costs? They go to the basis of the house, and and half of the house again, assuming it's fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty percent. Then then half. Uh, so all of the closing costs are going to go towards the total cost of purchase, and then half of it's going to be deductible uh, over twenty seven and a half years. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank Andy. you. Bye bye. Okay, we're going to quickly go to Dave. Hey, Dave. How can we help you? Hi, Esther. Um, I've got a little bit of a different situation here. I uh, own a couple properties here, and instead of selling it right out, uh, and I, I think at this point, uh, 
I, I think the, the sky's the limit with the way the properties are. Uh -oh. Possibly putting out a number out there that I would anticipate probably getting in two years uh, as an owner held. With owner held, would 20% be out of the line, out of line as far as uh, uh, monies to be uh, requested from? Uh, you mean it, from, as for the down? You mean for the down? Yes. Well, the bank is going to make you put it down that much. The bank, I thought it was 20%. I thought it was 10%. Well, it depends on if it's uh, owner, if it's owner occupied or investor property, right? Oh, okay. So uh, I don't, you know, here's the thing: most people that are holding mortgages, if the if the person that they're holding the mortgage for doesn't go to the bank, you, you, many times it's because they have not good credit. So in right. that situation, right. you would want to have as much downstroke as possible, for, because they may default and you're at risk. And I gotta right, go, no. buddy. Uh, thanks for okay. calling. Thank bye you, bye. Esther. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. Join us this week in EG Tax. Uh, you can email us at egtax.com. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next week. Bye bye.